You know, there's never been a moment in the history of humanity where the enemy hasn't tried to come to steal from the church. And you're part of the church, so he's going to try to steal from you as well. But right from the very, very beginning of time, when, when God made a place on this planet, he created the heavens and the earth, and he put all the animals on the earth, and then he uh, took the dust of the earth, and he made a, a man, and he called him Adam. Then he took a rib from that man, and, and he had a woman. But right from the beginning of time, there was, there was war going on, and God created the man, and he created the woman. And we know that the enemy was there to try to steal from God. And one of the things we've got to realize is that right throughout the time, though you know, there's different things there, it's still the same enemy. There's one enemy we have, and that's the devil. There's one enemy that we have, that's Satan. And I, I believe that you know, everything that can be attacked will be attacked. The Bible even speaks about whatever can be shaken will be shaken. And when you know all to stand, you've got to stand. But God is going to have what he said he will have. He's going to have a church on this planet without spot or wrinkle. He's going to have a church on this, this planet that is empowered with the Holy Spirit. He's going to have a people here that know their God and know the reality of it, and we're going to move in that power, I believe. A couple of weeks ago, uh, I, I, I shared some stuff on the Holy Spirit and different things like that, and, and I want to just do a little bit of a review and finish what I, what I started a couple of weeks ago. And, and I just I started with this. In reality, uh, we are in the end of time as man knows it. We are in the end of time. There's no doubt about it. Every, I, I think that so many prophets all over the world are all declaring uh, the soon coming of Christ. And you know, the Bible also says that God will do nothing on this planet without he first reveals it to his prophets. And there are a lot of people there that have got a prophetic mantle on their lives that are starting to declare. I know we've said it a long time ago. I know when I first got saved, they were, they were telling me that Jesus was coming back in five years. And because of that, I wouldn't plant a mango tree because it took nine years to get fruit from a mango tree. And because I really believed that. But a lot of that was just people's presumption, people hoping that it was going to happen. They didn't want to die or they didn't want to experience whatever it was. And so it was a little bit of a fad that was going through. But there's something different now. There's a different voice that's being spoken. And as God's speaking now, I believe through the prophets, and they're starting to prophesy. They're not just saying that Jesus is coming back. They're talking about a great end time revival. They're starting to speak about a great outpouring of the Spirit to God that God said he was going to have on this planet. And whether we realize it or not, it's already happening in many parts of the world. Over in Ethiopia, in the Ethiopia, there are literally thousands upon thousands of people, even though they're living in desert camps, that are coming to Christ and meeting with Jesus before they pass away or before you know the, 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 that, that famine gets hold of them, but they're coming to Christ. Over in the Middle East, over there in, uh, in many of those countries, there's a move of God where whole mosques are coming to Christ. There are, there are whole uh, synagogues that are coming to Christ as, as God starts to move by His Spirit. In Australia, we're ready for a move of the Spirit. Do you believe that? We need a move of the Spirit to, to come back again, to, to gather the church, to gather God's people, to, to, to cause us to rise up. You know, you know Ezekiel's vision when he, when he saw the deadness of the dry bones and, and, and he spoke and, and, and God said to him, he said, can these bones live? And, and Ezekiel, he didn't really know. And he said, I don't really know, but you know. And then he said to him these words, he said, prophesy. Speak to these bones. And, and I honestly believe that two prophets are going to start to rise up. We're going to hear the prophetic word that as you hear that prophetic word, it's going to cut right deep on the inside of you. It's not just going to be a feel-good thing. It's not just going to be something that makes you, gives you a few goosebumps, but it's something that's going to cut right down on the inside of you. It's going to cut away the dead wood and cut away the rubbish and the negatives and the disappointments or whatever it might be that will cause us to, to put a smile on our dial and stand again and, and be that strong people that God wants us to be. And I believe the prophets are beginning to rise and, and, and it's a good thing. And as he spoke into that, and as he spoke into those dry bones and he spoke life into those dry bones, the Bible says that those bones started to come together. Those things, and I believe that there's something there that's going to cause the churches to come together. 
There's going to be a coming together instead of being separated on this island and on that island. We might as well live in different countries and different anything because there's so much separation. But I believe that God wants to bring us together again. And uh, that as he said that, he said there stood an exceeding great army. And I believe that the army of God is about to rise and, and I'm, I'm looking forward. How many people are looking forward to that? You see, there's something that people can sense is about to happen. The question that I asked was, what will cause this avalanche of God's power that will see multitudes swept into the kingdom? What's going to cause this, this avalanche of, of, of great release of healing power in Australia? What's going to cause it? And uh, I believe that in many parts of the world, it's already happening. In John 16, verse 7, this is what Jesus said. He said, nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away, for if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment of sin because they do not believe in me, of righteousness because they go to my Father and you see me no more, of judgment because the ruler of the world is judged. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot hear them now. It says, however, when he, the spirit of truth has come, he will guide you into all truth. Father, just lift up your hands. Father, we want to be led into truth. There are many voices in the hour that we live in. There are many opinions. There are many things that have been spoken. But my God, we want the spirit of truth to come. And for that, we'll give you all the praise and all the glory. And everybody said, See, Jesus promised someone would take his place on earth. He promised that he would send the mighty Holy Spirit. In John 14, 16, it says, And I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever, the Spirit of truth. Just say, I've got the Spirit of truth in me. I have the Spirit of truth in me, and he wants to speak to me. Thank God we have this helper. Thank God we have this comforter. In Acts 1, 4, and 5, and I want to read this to you, if you just open up your Bibles to that, if you've brought your Bibles. And being assembled together, this is in verse 4, with them, he commanded them not to part from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you have heard from me. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized uh, with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. He says, being assembled together with them, he commanded them. In other words, he said, don't you go anywhere until you receive the Holy Spirit. You know, a lot of people can rush off and run forward, but I want to tell you if there's something that we need to grab hold of is we need the Holy Spirit today. He's the one that will lead us and guide us. He's the one that the spirit of truth that will reveal. He's the one that's going to convict people and convince people. He's the one that's going to, going to show the way to mankind. To wait for the promise, you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Don't go anywhere till you receive. In other words, don't minister without the Holy Spirit. Jesus didn't minister without the Holy Spirit. There came a day in Jesus' life when, when he was there and John the Baptist spoke over him. He said, behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Jesus came up to John and, John, and he said to John, he said, John, will you baptize me in water? And John says, oh, I'm not, I shouldn't be doing this. You should be baptizing me. And of course, he had to get all that out of the road. You know, one of the biggest problems with the church is false humility. God wants to use you. God wants to pour his spirit out upon you. God wants to do exceedingly abundantly above all you could ever imagine or think. But if we can only get rid of some false humility and say, God, you can use me. You used a rooster once, you used a donkey, you can use me. You can use anybody. And, and so, and, and, and Jesus, and as he spoke to him and as he was baptized in water, it says the spirit came upon him and, and uh, standed upon him as in the, in the form of a dove. And he was baptized in the Holy Spirit. And then it says that the Spirit of God led him into the wilderness where he's going to be tempted by the devil for 40 days. We know that in every way possible that Jesus was tempted, but he's now filled with the Holy Spirit. 
And he starts to quote the word of God to him and he starts to overcome him and he triumphed over him. The Bible says that Jesus was tempted in every way possible, but he overcame. He triumphed over the devil. The devil left him for a season, but Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit. Everybody say power of the Spirit. Friend, when we come to church, we get filled again and we need to return from, our, from this place with the power of the Spirit on our lives. Amen. We need to be recharged, we need re-anointed. And then Jesus went into the synagogue where he opened up the Bible and, and as he started to read and he, and he spoke these words, he said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because God has anointed me. God has baptized me in the Holy Spirit for a purpose, to heal the brokenhearted, to set at liberty those that are bruised, to, you know, to open the eyes of the blind and to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. In other words, you're saying he didn't do anything until he was filled with the Spirit of God. He had done no miracles up until that time. But now he's filled with the Holy Spirit. Now he starts to move in the authority and the boldness and, and he starts to speak in a different way. People were, were, were amazed. They marveled at the way he spoke because he spoke with one that had authority. Friend, I want to tell you there's a time coming when we're going to not just, when we're speaking to somebody, there's going to come a Holy Ghost authority over your life. It's not meaning that you're going to shout. It's not meaning that you're going to spit all over them. It's not meaning that you're going to have, I don't know what it is, goosebumps all over you. But your words are going to carry the anointing. And that anointing is going to go in like a, like a healing balm. It's going to go into those hurt areas. It's going to go into that and penetrate deep on the inside. You see, when you look at a person, you can, all you see is the outside. You don't see what's going on on the inside. It's very obvious that the Spirit of God sees what's going on on the inside as Greg started to share and he started to open up his heart and he started to prophesy, this is for you. And I guarantee you that there are people in this building, including me, that put, I wanted to put my hand up there because the Spirit of God went deep on the inside and started to hit a few areas that needed to be hit. And I needed to be reminded that I am in the palm of his hand. And I need to be reminded that God is for me. And if God is for me, who can, who can be against me? And I need to be reminded that if God called me, that God's going to do what he said he's going to do. Amen. And so, you know, it's God that, that carries the anointing. It's the anointing that breaks the yoke. It's the anointing that will set captives free. It's the anointing that will get inside of us. You know, one of the things that stops man is when we harden our conscience. When our conscience gets seared. But God, in our conscience, we just keep pushing him away, pushing him away. But I want to tell you, I believe this morning, this whole meeting is to embrace again and come again to Jesus. Let Jesus get around our lives. Let him have our lives, surrendering, whatever it might be, whatever you want to call it, but surrender. Because he has anointed me to preach the gospel. He, he has anointed me to heal the brokenhearted. He has anointed me to set free captives, the recovery of sight, to free the oppressed, and to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. See, I don't have to wait any longer. The Holy Spirit's already come. That's the revelation that I, I want to receive. I don't have to wait any longer. In the book of Acts chapter 2, verse 1, it says, Then uh, when the day of Pentecost had fully come. Everybody say fully come. Fully what does it mean fully come? Does that mean half come, a little bit come, or fully come? See, fully come means fully come. It's not, a, it just didn't put his, you know, like we sing that song. He put his left foot in, he put his left foot out, he put it, and he shook it all about. No, he, he put him whole self in, amen. He fully come. There's no hokey pokey about the Holy Ghost, amen. No hokey pokey here. Turn to somebody and say, no hokey pokey here. Put him, he put his whole self in. He, he fully came with full power, with full authority. Everything that God had invested in him fully came. And see, when he came into your life, he fully comes into our life. He just doesn't give us a little bit. He gives us a lot. And that we can overcome and triumph over the works of the devil. It says, when it fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven. I like that bit too. A sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind. And it filled the whole house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them divided tongues of a fire. And it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues. As the Spirit gave them utterance. 
What an amazing story. What an amazing thing. And of course, we know that Peter, when they said they're drunk and they're this, and some people there were perplexed and amazed and all the things that were going on there. But Peter says, hey, come on. It's not what you suppose. It's not what you think. See, what, what our problem today is that we think a lot of things. The Bible says, let the weak say they're strong. Let the poor say they are rich. It's not what I think today. It's not what I think. It's got nothing to do with what I think. It's got everything to do with what the Word of God says. The Word of God says he's going to have a revival. Well, I don't tell you what. Hell's going to have to freeze over before he doesn't have a revival. Amen. He's going to have a revival. He's going to have a move of his spirit. He's going to have a church. Might as well be us. Might as well start with us. Amen. What an amazing thing. Fully come. The waiting was over. The 120 people in the upper room were filled with the Holy Spirit. In Acts 1.8 it says, You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you to be a witness unto me. God wants us to have the power to become witnesses. That doesn't mean that you have to put yourself between a sandwich board with the end is coming and something else on the back. You know what I mean? It, it just means that your life and everything about you is going to show forth the glory of God. You're gonna, it's gonna, there's something there that's going to happen in your life. You're going to receive power when the Holy Spirit's come upon you. It's not by might, it's not by power or the natural power, but it's by my Spirit, says the Lord. And I've got to realize that the Holy Spirit, has, I've, you know, I'm not just waiting for the Holy Spirit to come. He's already here. In uh, Mark, let's have a look at Mark. Mark chapter 16, amazing verses of Scripture here. Later, it says in verse 14, Later he appeared to the eleven as they sat at the table, and he rebuked their unbelief and hardness of heart, because they did not believe those who had seen him after he had risen. They did not believe, who the, because they, even though they would said he's alive, he's risen, but they didn't believe him. And here they all, all are sitting, most surely, uh, having a, a, a pity party, having a, most surely a miserable time, saying, oh, we thought this and we thought that, and oh, if only if he hadn't have done this, or we told him not to go to Jerusalem, we told him to stay here. How many people know that we're full of good ideas? If only he hadn't have done that. If only he had, had have done what we said he would do. And they're mostly there. And Jesus walks into the place. Oh, I would have loved it. How many people would have loved to have been there? Well, I'm, I, wouldn't, I really wouldn't because I would have been one of the 11. <laughs> they were full of unbelief. But I would love to see the video of it. As he walks in and, and he starts to talk to them, I, I would imagine that, that their eyes would have looked like saucers. I imagine they would have been shaken in their boots saying, my God, he did rise. <laughs> my God. You know, that's what happens sometimes when, when you're sick and, and all of a sudden you get a revelation that, that, that Jesus heals and, and you grab hold of something and, 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 all, and you get healed and, it's, and it just turns your whole life upside down, right side up or whatever it might be. And here they are, these guys, they're, they're, they're there and, and it says that he, he came in. And later he appeared to the eleven as they sat at the table and he rebuked their unbelief and hardness of heart because they did not believe those who had seen him after he was risen. And he said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. The gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved and he who does not believe will be condemned. These signs will follow those who believe. In my name they will cast out demons. I want to tell you, friends, we're going to see demons cast out. Do you believe that today? There's got to come a renewing. There's got to come a renewal that's, that's going to stir again in the hearts of people. There, there's, there's something. I, I believe the first thing that God starts to, uh, that attracts God is compassion. When there's compassion, we don't want to see people brokenhearted and, and, and going through all that they're going through. And, and, and it says, these signs will follow those who believe in my name. They will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. Uh, they will take up serpents, and if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. And they will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. And this bunch of uh, backsliders or this bunch of people that, that were full of unbelief 
whatever it was, they had that one touch from Jesus, they had that one encounter with Jesus, it must have impacted their life so much that they got up off their blessed assurance and they went out and they started preaching the gospel and God went with them, confirming the word with signs and wonders and miracles and great things started to happen and the church was starting to build, amen. Friend, we've got to start to get in. We've got to remember that we are at war. There's a war going on in the realm of the Spirit. Everything about us is at war. Our bodies, our health, goodness knows what, the church, everything that I can ever imagine, the church, there's a war going on. There's a young church there in Brisbane that just last, well, a couple of weeks ago, about a month ago, a flourishing church, amazing church. I, I, I admired this church so much, the, the youth and what they were doing up there. Hundreds of kids got born again and, and, and the enemy got in and, and caused the young man to commit adultery and now the whole thing's in a kaboom. The enemy gets in. I, I'm angry with that, amen. I am angry with that. Is it all right to be angry against the enemy? The, the church is being attacked. There's an attack on the church, friend. There's an attack on pastors. There's an attack on, on, on the members of the church. There's an, there's an attack that has to be stopped. I want to ask this again. What will cause this avalanche of God's power to flow into Australia? I, I do believe that we all have to get up off our blessed assurance and go somewhere and do something. Tell a dying world that Jesus the Christ is alive and that he is the answer. I want to be bold today and say he is the answer for every circumstance and every situation. I want to tell you today it doesn't matter what government you've got. It doesn't matter what politicians in power, what what party you believe in has got nothing to do with that because I want to tell you our enemy is not governments our enemy is the devil yeah. gay marriages goodness no talked to a young lady the other night on the boat Kendall's one of Kendall's daughters she got a church in Sydney and there's heaps of gays heaps of people she said this person came into the church she didn't know whether he was a boy or a girl didn't have a clue. She had look, it looked more like a girl, but it also had something about a boy. And, uh, but she had a handbag and everything like that. Came in there and she was, when the pastor was preaching, oh, that's wonderful, you know, carrying on how these people do. But she, or he, it, <laughs> got gloriously saved. Everybody say gloriously saved. Totally delivered. So, to how many people know you've got to get delivered? Totally, 100% delivered. Today, that person is married to a beautiful young lady and serving in leadership in the church. People need to be delivered. Amen. I'm not going to stand up and oppose, and they just need to get delivered. Amen. They're good people. I look at the people in the in those. Those, those marches and those people that are getting married and, and stuff like that, it's the media, but they look like normal people. They just need to get delivered. Yes. Amen? Yes. Get that filthy, unclean devil cast out of them. Amen? Yes. Well, who's going to do it? Tony Abbott? No, Tony Abbott's not going to do it. <laughs> the church. Give us, put up your hand if you're part of the church. <laughs> us. That's us. Amen? That's us, and God wants to empower us. But if you don't, if you don't, you know, if you don't go for it, call unto me and I'll answer you and show you great and mighty things. God wants to empower us. Friend, I believe it's why it's important to, to come and, and get into the presence of God, to come and, and meet with God and, and worship and, and allow the anointing to get over us and allow the presence of God to get over us. You know, when we come sometimes, it's, oh, the music's too loud, it's too soft. Friend, I couldn't care less whether it's loud or soft. I don't care. All I'm interested in is whether the Holy Ghost is here or not. And the enemy will do whatever he can to stop the Holy Ghost from coming. And we've experienced some of that over the last four or five weeks where the enemy's poured everything he can. In. But I believe today we're starting to break through again. I believe we're starting to break into what God wants for us again. And the Holy Ghost is coming again. Amen. Sure, we won't. You can quit in the midst of it if you want, or you can fight. You can quit if you, if you want, or we can fight. Hey? Eh? Who wants to fight? Come on, let's fight. 
Let's fight with everything we've got for what, what God wants to do in our lives. You know, I believe that God's going to cause something to flow into, the, into Australia, in the church, through the church. But we're going to have to get up off our blessed assurance. I believe that our nest is being shaken. You know, you know what? It's a, how many know it's a good thing to, to get shaken? I, I can remember the, you know, we were at the prayer meeting there and our prayer meeting was growing and, and we were getting about 40, uh, nearly, we're heading for 50 people at the prayer meeting. And, and, and you know what? I, I don't know if I, I, I think I got a bit proud. Thinking, man, oh, we, 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 we're doing goody. And then all of a sudden there's 25. Oh. <laughs> Brought me back to reality. Because you see, lest the Lord build the house, they that build it labor in vain. That doesn't mean you come just so as you can humble kneel. <laughs> come to the prayer meeting. Get into the presence of God. Fall on your faces in the presence of God. Let, let the presence of God get over our lives and let us be touched by God and let's call upon his name and let's, let's believe for God to do great and mighty things. See, it, I don't know about you, but, but as a Christian, if I had a gauge on me, there's a lot of times when I come into the church, I'm on empty. Hey? Anybody else come empty? <laughs> Amen. You come empty, it's okay. Don't be embarrassed. Don't be shy. Don't be, just get filled again. Amen. <laughs> just have a drink. I like that song. Drink, drink. No, that's a, sorry, that's wrong, wrong drink. Wrong drink. Wrong. But if you're running on empty, just get filled again. There came a sound from heaven as a mighty rushing wind and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Friend, I want to tell you, you can't get away from God because it's, he's filled this whole planet. Amen. It's not a walk in the park serving God. Peter and John got arrested after the uh, cripple was healed, thrown into prison. Stephen uh, was stoned uh, to death for preaching the gospel. Paul and Silas were in prison, um, and, but they sang pra praises to God. Lash many, I think he received 39 lashes quite a few times. But they saw great breakthroughs. I saw a great move of the Spirit. They saw great things. I believe the church has got to realize again that we are in war. A war where the battle is not ours. But you've got to show up to fight. You've got to show up to fight. just want to have a quick look in, in uh, Gideon's, uh, in Judges here. I'm going to talk about Gideon for a little minute. Judges chapter 7, verse 2. And the Lord said to Gideon, The people who are with you are too many for me to give the Midians into their hand, lest Israel claim glory for itself against me, saying, My own hand has saved me. Here, here's a situation where, where God starts to speak to Gideon. He's got to, get him to a, got to go through a lot of things to get him to this place. But why I'm saying this is... We find that there's a church here, here or a group of people, 33,000 people. And there they are, they're coming out to, to do battle. And then God speaks and says, look, all those that are fearful, send them home. The Word of God says that 22,000 people left, left, left him with 10,000. Then, then he spoke again and, and he said, you know, those that lap and those that do this, and, and left him with 300, they won a mighty battle. One of the great things that I believe here is that uh, one of the things that we've got to get rid of is the spirit of fear that gets around our lives. The church has to be delivered from the spirit of fear because here is an army that's been trained in battle, trained in warfare, trained to, 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 you know, to go out and combat, but in, inside them they are fearful. And, you know, we can be part of the church. We're the church. Here we are. We're, we're living on this planet and we're doing this stuff and we're doing what other stuff. But if you're full of fear, if, we've got to get rid of that fear. We've got to say, God, oh, oh, I, you see, God has not given to me the spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. And, so, and, and you know, like I said before, let the weak say they are strong and let the fearful say, I don't have fear. Cast away fear. What do I have to do then to break fear? What do, what, you've got to go out and do something that would have normally caused you fear. 
Something there that you're frightened of. It doesn't, I don't mean jumping off a wall in a bungee thing or something like that. But, but what I'm talking about is, is, is going up to somebody and starting to share your faith. You see, most of the things that we fear are just a figment of our imagination. And the thing that we fear really doesn't have any power at all in it. It's only got the power in our mind. It's got the power that gets hold of us and says, I can't do that. I'll never be able to do that. You know what? I was one of the shyest boys in town. I, I, had, a, I had a problem with shyness. I would always be at the end of the row. I'd always be somewhere hiding. Even when I got into the ministry to start with and we were with the children, I was okay with children, but now I've become a pastor of a church. I was scared stiff. We started the school, and the, as the school was started, I had to become the principal. I was terrified because of my lack of education. I was left school when I was 13 years of age. I, I, I had a real problem in this area. Now they want me to be the principal of the school. I thought, these poor kids, they know what they're doing. They, they, had, this, they had this dogmatic thing that the senior pastor had to be the principal of the school. So I went to principal school. And I had to pass 10 exams and I had to get an 85% pass or I couldn't become a principal. I had never had an 85% pass in my life. And, and here, here I am in the midst of this thing. But somehow or other, I had to front up. Somehow or other, I had to turn up. I could, have, I could have said, this is ridiculous. I'll never get an 85% pass. I'll never be able to achieve this. I'll never be able to make it. Friend, I want to tell you, you would be amazed at what God can do in your life when you front up. When you, when you say, okay, God, I can't do this, but you're going to have to help me. How many people know he's pretty smart? <laughs> and, and, and here I am there, and I go to this this principal school, and before the, the school teachers, they all had a day start on us. Because the principals of the school, we had to have a, some, whatever it was, special meeting with everybody. And I was so embarrassed that I, I hid behind a pot plant. When I couldn't get a pot plant, I'd, I'd find the biggest fella in the place and I'd hide behind him. And I made sure that I never made eye contact with anybody. Nobody. Head down. You're in, you're in, in, in dangerous territory here. If you, don't, if you open up your mouth, everybody will know you're stupid. <laughs> Just keep it that you're the only one that knows. <laughs> and I remember I got up there and to do my exams... And I'm looking at this stuff and anyhow, I'm writing it out and doing it. And, and, and I went over and, and I got my first thing. I got 98%. I look at it, my God, this works. I looked at the one I got wrong. I said, what was wrong with that one? <laughs> they said the answer was philosophy. And I'd, I'd answered philosophy, but I spelled it so bad that they didn't even recognize it. <laughs> But I ended up with a 96% average. And, and I became the principal of the school. And nobody else knew that I was stupid. I put my thing on, the, on my pulpit. Nine, nine, yeah. I still have that little bit of pride problem now and then. But my boast is in him today, my friend. Amen. Come on. Look, you've got to front up. You've got to, you've got to push through those barriers. You've got, to, you've got to do something. Go up and talk to somebody. Go up and talk to somebody. Make sure they're not deaf. <laughs> Just go and talk to somebody. Do something. Get a, let, let God get a hold of your life and, and break those strongholds that are there. You see, the Bible says the truth will make you free. And, and, you know, God wants to do exceedingly abundantly above all that you could ever imagine. And, and I believe in Romans 1.16, it says for this gospel, it's got to be preached. But friend, it's for the church, amen. It's for you and me to do it. We, we're just going to have to preach this gospel, go out there and tell the world that Jesus is alive and that he's a, that, that he's a good God, amen. That he is a good God. Father, I'm just asking you today that, that we would... Somewhere or other as a people rise up. Understand, Lord, the attack that's coming from the enemy. The, the attack that's coming, we know where it's coming from. It doesn't matter whether it's uh, 
this or that or whatever it might be, all these fronts, whether it's sickness, whether it's uh, diseases, whether it's poverty, whether it's frustrations or whatever it is that's, that's in our and around our lives where we're being attacked, it's all coming from the one source. The one source that's attacking our lives. And Lord, we come against that in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And Lord, we're asking you to raise your church up, raise your people up in Jesus' name. Allow the anointing to to flow into our lives again. Lord, let us be like the, the days of Peter when Peter stood up and said, this is not as you suppose, but this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, I will pour out of my spirit. And my God, you've promised us a great outpouring, a latter day revival that's going to come. And Lord, we want to be able to be boasters of that. We want to be able to say that you're going to move by your spirit and you're going to pour out your your spirit upon our lives in a new way. There's coming a coming a fresh anointing, my God, a fresh awakening, my God. Lord, let the prophets rise. Let the let the prophetic words be spoken. Lord, let the let the evangelists, let let the apostles, let the teachers, let the let the pastors rise up in Jesus' name. And Lord, put something on the inside of them that will cause them to speak the truth. Because my God, it's the truth that will set people free. And Father, we give you all the praise and we give you all the glory in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. If you're here today and you don't know Christ as your Lord and Savior and there's something in your heart that you would want to give your life to Him, give your life to Christ today. Give your life to Jesus. He is the only answer to you today, for you today. He is the answer that will help you today. He will help you. He will help you. He will help you. He will be your friend. He, he, wants to, he wants to open your eyes to, to see the, the glory of God. Jesus is not some religious man. He's life. He's life and His life more abundant. So I'm asking you today, if you've never given your life to Christ, give your life to Jesus. Just give your life to Him.